This is part three of section 2.1. We want to graph this and we want to put it into standard form before we graph it so we can read off our vertex, so on and so forth. Okay, so to complete the square on this, I'm going to need to divide everything by a three. So I will have one third y is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 8 thirds. Now I'm going to move the 8 thirds over to the left. So minus 8 thirds here, leaving myself a little bit of space. Okay. Now I take the number in front of my x, which is 4, divide it by 2, to get a two, and then you take that two and square it to get a four. So I'm going to add four to both sides of this equation. I have one third y, that ends up being uh, four thirds plus four thirds when you add those. This is a perfect square trinomial that factors as x plus two squared. So we've completed the square. Now let's get the y by itself again. So I'm going to subtract 4 thirds from both sides. And now multiply everything so that you by 3, so you just have a y again. So you have 3 times x plus 2 squared minus 4. Okay, so your a value is three. That means that my graph is going to open up because it's positive. My h value is going to be a negative two and the k value is negative four. So my vertex is the point negative two, negative four. So right there. My axis of symmetry is going to be x equal negative two. So I'm gonna put this in with a dotted line here. Okay. Let's find the y-intercept. So if my x value is zero, then I have y equals three times zero plus 12 times zero plus eight, which is just eight, which is here. And I can use symmetry to get another point on the other side. I'm two units away from the axis here. So I go two units on the other side, which is right up there. Now, if I'm just doing a very basic sketch, this is enough, but we're also asked to find our x-intercepts. So we need to take and set this equal to zero. Okay, so now let's go to the quadratic formula because this doesn't factor. My x value is negative 12 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 144, minus four times three times eight over two times three. This gives me x equal to negative 12 plus or minus, that ends up being the square root of 48 over six. The square root of 48 is of four times the square root of three over six. And now you can factor a two out of the top. Let's see if I can write it properly. And then the two and the six reduced to a three. 
So your x-intercepts are negative 6 plus or minus 2 square root of 3 divided by 3. Now, if you're asked to give your x-intercepts in a problem, this is what you would type in. But when it comes to a graph, we need some approximations. So use your calculator, and you'll see that your x values are approximately negative 0 0.845 and negative 3.1. 155. So estimate those on your graph here. So negative 8.45 is not quite to 1. So there. And then a little bit more than 3. So about right there. And then just sketch your graph. Okay. Now, why did we go through all of this on two problems with completing the square? One, it's mainly so that you know what's actually happening here so that you can appreciate the formula we are about to give you, but also because it is important that you recognize that this can be used. There are certain types of problems in math where really your only good option is to go to completing the square. And so anytime we can bring it up and show you how it's being used in the background, the better off you're going to be in the long run but you're probably right. You're probably thinking there has to be an easier way, and there is. What we've done, I say we, I'm talking mathematicians, is we complete the square on a very general form of the quadratic. So if you complete the square on this and then get it all in the right form and move everything around, so on and so forth, your h value is always going to be negative b over 2a. So if you can find negative b over 2a, you have your x value. And then to find the y value for your vertex, you can just plug in the x value and do the computations. That's all this is saying, is if you can find negative b over 2a, then your vertex, you have this part of it. Then you take this number, whatever it is, and you plug it in to find your k value right there.